Hello everyone. I hope your today was I hope today was very nice for you. So, we got some information from the by Daylight's developers. We have some patch notes for the PTB coming tomorrow. And they are kind of disappointing. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, some of the changes they have are nice with some of the add-ons. My favorite being the pig add-ons being changed. However, the general problem I have with the add-ons, or it's not add-ons, but the patch notes themselves, was that I just felt like there was a little too little to go with this mid-chapter patch. We have boon totems that are busy destroying everyone's mental states as we speak, and then we also have a few other questionable killers that a lot of people still like to cry about. But it doesn't really matter to me, I don't... I'm not losing hair over any of the changes. They're all relatively good. However, there is one change that interests me the most that I don't see many people talking about. That being the new betas tab that's coming out soon. So how the new betas tab will work is that you just go to the settings over here. There will be like a little tab that you can put over here and say, I want the betas tab on or I want it off. What this means is that you will be able to play test any type of small functionality change that Dead by Daylight wants to add to the game. Such as how they want to change the wiggle states in survivors. So instead of it being AD spam or or rolling the joystick, instead it will be just simple skill checks, like if you were to work on a gen, or if you were s struggling on a hook. Overall, I think the betas tab is a very good option for Dead by Daylight. This means that you are able to play test new features that are coming to the game, and allow for some more changes to come out, instead of just on a simple mid-chapter patch, which, j which would be really nice, because if the betas tab does does what I'm thinking it's going to do, it means that we could see more changes coming to Dead by Daylight outside of just a simple mid-chapter patch. So, sure, it'll be small functionality changes like, oh, maybe instead of Ghostface having crouch on control, it'll instead be on spacebar. Regardless though, it's simple changes, but it's always nice to see something happening to Dead by Daylight, because the game does need some changes every now and again to give it some more flavor. Now, and and the one thing that I love the most about the betas tab is actually the fact that you can decide whether you want to use it or not. Because everyone will be able to use it on console, on Switch, on their laundry basket, whatever. You are now able to use the betas tab on the PTB, which is now coming to live relatively soon after the mid-chapter patch goes through some testing, of course. However, I just like that you're able to choose to turn it on or off. This means that not only get do you get the chance to play test something new? But if you just want to play simple Dead by Daylight, the devs aren't threatening you at gunpoint to try it out. They're just like, just turn it on or off if you don't want it, and you're free to play test it. But we will compensate you, which is really nice because when you are on the PTB, you don't really get any incentive to really try out any of the changes. So it's always nice to see something like that. I have two nice game. Or I have two nice games to show you with Ghostface, where the first one was the simple build of I'm All Ears, Thrilling Tremors, Corrupt Intervention, and Pop Goes the Weasel. And then my second game, I run the Cheap Cologne and Walleye's Matchbook um, offer or add-ons. Overall, they were very fun games. I hope that you enjoyed them. And let me know in the comments what your thoughts were about the PTB dev notes. I honestly thought they were pretty nice. They could have used a little bit more flavor, but in the end they were still good overall. I hope that you enjoyed these games, and I wish you luck in the Entity, everyone. You will definitely need it. Alrighty, Suffocation Pit. Eh, a pretty mediocre map. But since I am playing Ghostface, this will be a little bit nicer with the terrain around. Now, to actually find someone. So I'm running a very standard build because I just prestiged Ghostface. I don't have way too much to use. But I'm using I'm All Ears, Thrilling, Pop, and Corrupt Intervention. Oh. Alright, I see two different Yunjins. Alright, one of them's 99, that's good. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, just close. If I had sight add-ons, or um, cooldown add-ons, I might be able to get this earlier. She vaults that. I think I'm just going to toy with her. Yep, get that. I'm gonna wait for my power to come back. Then I'll fully stalk and then get the insta down. Alright, fully stalked. And she's down! I better be careful because the other Yunjin was close too. Luckily, basement is nearby. Shack pallets is down. So I can hook nicely here. And because of pop, I can hopefully make it to that gen there. Since thrilling didn't go down, it means that someone's working on this gen here. Yep, has a bit of progress on it. Use pop, get some valley from that. And hit the Michaela. What the? Pick you. Hmm, I should have probably been a bit more patient since she did have some stock. But that's fine. Ooh. Almost. I think I'm gonna chase that Michaela. She's at LT walls. I struggle at LT walls. I need to learn how to properly loop these. But she didn't play it as well as some other survivors. So I got some value. Oh! Made a slight mistake. Alright, I forgot she had quick and quiet for a second there. I was about to ask, hey, why is she quiet? Regardless, we got two down. Some nice pressure. I hear Jen have some, a little bit of progress. I'll hook the Michaela And then kick that Jen. Actually, we are going to do this. Move away. Use my power. And one her. Get some pressure. And then kick this gem. Because a pop will lose progress, which is always nice. And I see David over there. Yep. Or Jeff, I mean. Nice. Alright. Let's go after Jeffy boy. Poke through there. Oh! Because if I'm all ears, we were able to see his aura. It looks like he has quick and quiet too. Most likely with head on. So I'm guessing the Yunchen and Jeff are either a duo. Or they both decide to go for a nice head on play. See Michaela. Swing. Get the pallet stun, that's fine. And then go for a nice juicy down here. Is there a window this way? No, it looks like the window's there. Yep. Poker. Red stain that way. Ooh. Nice play from her. She was a little bit patient there. Ooh. I made a mistake there. I thought my lunch would be just a tad bit longer. I'm all ears giving us some nice value. She's gonna play with the LT walls now. Regardless, we still get it down. Two gens down though. That's quite a lot of pressure from the survivors. Luckily, this Michaela is going to hit second stage now. Oh, three gens. Ooh. Luckily, all the other gens are blocked now due to thrilling. Hopefully, we can find someone soon. Because. Oh. Alright, I see someone there. I think it's Yunjin, maybe. Yep. Yunjin, he was healing Jeff. Alright. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's go after Yunjin. 
get the M1. She's going to camp the pallet. Poke our... Alright, the Yunjin is playing very predictably, where I just poke my red stain just n enough that she thinks I'm going to follow up that way. But in actuality, it's a trick. I'm just going to go around. It's always nice, especially with Ghostface, because you need as much pressure as you can get. Alrighty. There's another hook, and let's kick this pallet. Or Jen, I mean. Wow! They really... They really want to finish this gen, huh? Well, they now have to afford with getting a down. I will hook her in a bit, maybe. Let's go after the Jeff first. He is injured. Poke through this way. Yep. Get a nice juicy down. The Michaela's probably nearby. Yep, there she is. I was trying to get some stock, but I guess Yunjin or Jeff saw me. Ooh, that was going to be a grab. That's interesting. No matter. Ooh. Jen blocked me, but it's okay. We still get the Makila here. Yep. Alright, let's go for the Yunjin over there. She's been on the floor long enough. She's back on the floor. That's great, actually. Let's instead now just go after this Yunchen instead. She's going this way where there's no pallet because we kicked her recently. That's good. That's good. And with that, everyone is down except Michaela. She had Unbreakable. That's actually really surprising. Regardless, though, this Yunchen is out of the game now. That's a lot of pressure immediately. They just picked up the Jeff. I'm thinking they're going to go for the Yunjin. Yep, they just picked up Yunjin. Everyone is injured though, so we get a lot of value. Let's go after this Yunjin Lee. Yep, she's going to medium vault that. Doesn't have the time for a fast one. Or she doesn't have enough space for a fast vault. Regardless though, we now have 1% out of the game. Michaela's on death hook. And this is the first time we're hooking the Yunjin. I'm actually surprised by this. And I see a Michaela here too. This is great. <laughs> Alright, she's down. That's good. If I remember, Michaela's on death hook. So we just hook her in the basement and then... Oh, and Jeff just went for the save. That's good. Alright. We put Michaela in the basement and we kick that gen that she was working on since I had a little bit of progress. The gens are far spread, so we're gonna have a lot of ways to walk, which is really problematic. Especially for Ghostface, because Ghostface isn't a mobile killer. He struggles with a lot of larger maps, due to him being relatively more slower than most killers. But I'm sure we can find some way to cope. Let's kick this gen too. Get as much pressure as possible. I don't remember grouping here. They must have just dropped the pallet for some reason. Alright, let's just look for... I see Jeff over there. That's great. He's out in the open. Oh, Yunjin's here too. Let's go for Jeff first, though. Because I know he doesn't have dead art. He most likely has, um, head on because of quick and quiet. And now let's go for this Yunjin here. Try and trick her with the crouch. Didn't work. Oh, she didn't go for the pallet stun. And with that, that's the first game done. Oh! That was honestly a really fun game, though. Not gonna lie. Some of the loops were pretty nice. There was a lot of pressure from Jens. But in the end, we managed to get them all. Uh... I'm surprised no one went for aggressive head-on play. It felt like they either had too little time for head-on, or they were just a little bit too passive with it. I was also surprised by this Jeff. Like, he just hopped into a locker with quick and quiet and that's it. I mean, granted, he didn't have enough time to charge up the head-on, but... Normally, people with head-on, they like to be a bit more aggressive, especially in survive with friends situations. So just seeing this happen is just kind of... confusing. Regardless, though, it was a good game. 
And we managed to get everyone down nicely, too. Alrighty. That's a four kill game with just... Well, tier one and tier two perks. Regard regardless, it was a fun game. JJ well played everyone. Alright, Temple of Purgation. A relatively large map, to say the least. And to speak more about it, I don't think it's a great map for Ghostface, but hey, we will do whatever we can. And hey, I see someone right over here, running this way. Let's get a chunky stock on them. Oh, the value. And it looks like he's going to drop down here. And he ran towards us, that's wonderful. Smile for the camera, David. Oh, wonderful. All right, let's pick you up and get you on a nice, lovely hook for a lovely vacation. And I'm using two add-ons, unlike the last game. The add-ons I'm running are the cheap cologne and the um, walleye's matchbook. So what the matchbook does is it reduces the cooldown of Ghostface's power by a small amount. That being four... It used to be four seconds, I believe it's now only two seconds. I think I saw someone that way too. The cheap cologne increases the exposed status effect by five seconds. Overall, not the best add-ons for Ghostface. He has a few better ones here and there. But... I can't understand the usefulness of them, especially in cases where Ghostface does struggle with his power being relatively long. Alright, looks like someone ran this way. It's the David again. I am so sorry, buddy. But we do see Jonah, and we get a miss. But we do land this one. Alright, it looks like, yeah, Jonah has overcome, which is a new exhaustion perk, which overall is great, in my opinion. I think we can get a hit here. No, just out of reach. Let's pretend we're going that way, but in actuality, we go up here and hit the Fengman. She's going to drop down this way, and we're going to kick the pallet. Let's look down and follow the footsteps that she's making. It looks like, yeah, she went right back where she came from. But this is good. She's now out in the open. There's no pallet she can run towards. And unless she has dead heart. Yep. We get a nice down on her. We now have two hooks before a single gen has been completed, which is fantastic. This gives us a lot of nice pressure, especially since it is very necessary when playing a killer like Ghostface. Alright, we see it with thrilling trailers or thrilling tremors that this is the only gen that has progress. So we're going to cloak and crouch a little bit. Or the only gen that people are working on. We're going to walk this way, crouch slowly, and hit the item. Let him run away. We're going to use our pop. And someone just unhooked the person over there. It looks like Adam wants to loop here. That's fine. We can get rid of another relatively good pallet here. He drops it. Oh, the fake we did was not that great, but he did not play that too well himself either. So with this, we get another down. Alright, three hooks before a single genocide. That's incredible. But I think that's like two boom totems I just heard popping. So that's not very fun. Regardless though, we can handle the boon totems. I see a injured Feng Min over there. She's going to start running to this pallet here. But that's okay. We make her wasted, and we kick this gen. Because the pop we get a lot of increased gen regression, which is very good. Get some more pressure out, as always. And I see the thing is running this way. Ooh, this gen has a lot more progress, though. And sadly... Ooh, that was going to be a grab, but sadly, the gen was completed before that happened. So instead, we just get a chunky hit. Regardless, that's very good. I believe you have Dead Heart, David. No, you don't have Dead Heart. That's interesting. Uh, David without a Dead Heart, that's really... That's actually just confusing. A David without a Dead Heart is like... 
a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the jelly, I guess. I can't think of a better analogy. That's just the best one I can think of. Stuff this totem out. And that gen is still regressing. They finally completed one. David is now on second stage, which is a lot of very good pressure. I see scratch marks that way. Let's turn cloaked and stalk the Jonah. Ah, oh, just sadly too little time. However, we'll run with him, try and get some pallets down if we can. Because of the walleye smash book, we should be able to get our cooldown back quick. Alright, let's just keep on following him. Get some pallets out of the way. Nice, thank you very much, Jonah. Alright, and we get the stock. I'm surprised that I actually managed to go through. Because he was behind a wall. He drops the pallet there. Ooh, we see him through. We see him because of I'm all ears, and we get a nice insta down. Which is, overall, more pressure, and that's very necessary with Ghost Face. Alright, we also managed to get some really nice pallets out of the way, too. This one was not as good, but it's nice to just get something out of the way, as always. Let's enter ghost mode and see that over there, the pow the gen has just been completed. That's okay, we see the David over there. Try and get some stock out on him. Try and get one shot, maybe. Mmm, doesn't look like we can, but we can try. And we get the... Ooh, just a slight miss, but we will be able to get him in the end here. And with that, David is now out of the game. I'm sorry, David, but I need a lot more pressure, and you are the key to that. Hook him out of the game, and Jonah was just rescued, meaning that there are people inside of this building, most likely, since they just healed. See if there are any scratch marks, if they're working on this gen. I saw s I think I saw some scratch marks. Yep, they're going upstairs. I'm thinking it's the Feng Min. I think I can hear her breathing. That is right. Let's just go for a nice M1. Let's not waste any time with any stock. Alright, and I heard another boon to them. Just go up. Yep, a pallet just went down. That's a okay. Let's look down and just follow her footsteps. She's going this way. Yep. And we should be able to get a nice down here very easily and simply. Since it doesn't look like anyone in this game is running dead hard. I have to remember though that the Jonah's running Overcome. And what Overcome does is allows you to run two seconds faster after getting hit. So when I do see Jonah, I'll have to stalk him and get insta down ready. Let's enter stealth because I think Jonah is working on this gen. Hmm. Doesn't look like anyone's on this gen. Let's just kick it and get the pop belly. Very nice and easy. And let's kick this pallet too. It's relatively safe, so it's fair enough to break it. And I think I hear the boon totem. It's somewhere up. It's somewhere here. Oh. Let's get a stock. Very nice. Ah! The Adam wasn't paying very much attention. With this, we can hook him but with thrilling. This is the problem with the build I have. Because the thrilling, it blocks the generators for a few seconds. But that makes it so it's almost impossible for me to kick gens with pop. So, there are situations where thrilling is nice. It gives you nice information. Here's that totem. And it gives you a lot of nice pressure, but at the same time, it can cause some repercussions. Especially if you're running something like pop or ruin. And with that, pop is out of the way. We get some nice value. And I think they are going to run to the gen over there, since it had some progress. Oh no, they didn't go here. But I am getting stalked from somewhere. I think, yeah, I see Feng Men over there. I think someone is inside here, though. And it looks like they might try and go for the save, possibly. No. I'm surprised. I thought that I saw someone looking at me from up there. It might have just been the thing who was at the corner here, but... Oh, well. 
Yep, I see the Fingman over there. She wants to get my attention. Let's give her my attention if that's the case. Alright, we're running to Shack Pellet. Let's see how you do. Alrighty. And Adam's out of the game. I'm surprised Jonah didn't go for the rescue. Ooh. Ooh, just went for that uh, straight up W game moment. Fair enough, fair enough. Because if I'm all ears, I can now see where she is for a brief period of time. I'm going to fake it. Yep! And just like that, she's now out of the game, too. The only person I haven't hooked too often is Jonah. But that's just because it's been very... There's been very little time since I've been able to see him. Um, Thrilling says he's not on any generator, so I'm thinking he's just hiding in a locker somewhere. It's moments like this I wish I had barbecue and chili, so that way I could tell where he was. Because he could be hiding in a locker, he could be running for generators, he could be doing something, I have no idea what. Regardless though, let's just look for Hatch. If he gets the Hatch, it's fine. Oh, and he just found it. Overall, a very great game. Let's see what the perks they had were. Decisive Strike, ooh. Alright, that's an interesting one. And I see Deliverance, most likely on the Atom. Because we hooked him before he could get a hook state, he couldn't use Deliverance. So, he lost some privilege there. Prove Thyself is also relatively nice. This guy was going full on meta, except with Plunderers. That is actually a pretty interesting one. Probably for a key play. But regardless, a very good build. Plasma is very interesting. I didn't see this very often, but I think it's because he didn't have time to set it up too often. Then Circle of Healing, Exponential. We're gonna live forever. That's actually really nice. And there's the Overcome. Regardless though, it was a good game. Some really nice perks, some perks- Oh my goodness, this man ran alert. I love him already. I love people who run alert. It's one of my favorite survivor perks in the game. Regardless though, this was a very fun game. I hope they all enjoyed it as much as I did. I will admit, we got some really nice stocks in the beginning and mid game. And that was really fun to just one shot survivors. That's probably one of my favorite features about Ghostface, but at the same time, it can be very clunky as you saw. Regardless though, good games overall. I would love to play more like this.